Welcome to the Orange Couch. I'm Mark. I'm Amanda. And this is Mad Men, Season 7, Episode 2, A Day's Work. How are you, Don? Great. Jim Hobart, Dave Worcester. Jim Hobart is a total blast from the past. He's the guy who tried to steal Don by giving Betty the Coca-Cola modeling gig way back in Season 1. The past can't be forgotten in this episode. If life is a funeral, the past is the yellow-faced dead body in the middle of the room. At his lunch, Don tries to play it cool, but he has the Hershey's debacle thrown in his face. Pete's Chevy dealership signings are ruined when the other partners decide Bob Benson should get involved. Peggy sees Ted in every rose, and Sally can't forget what she saw Daddy doing to the neighbor. As usual on this show, people tend to think they can make the past go away by pretending it's not there. Keep pretending. That's your job. But all throughout this episode, when people tried to pretend something wasn't so, it inevitably came back to bite them in the ass. Sometimes it's something innocent, such as Pete trying to pretend he's not having sex in Ted's office. Or, understandable at least, with Peggy trying to pretend her messages to Ted are work-related. But, in both cases, as well-intended as they may be, they get caught out. Sally's school chums hatch the perfect scheme to sneak away for a shoe expedition. But Sally's lost purse forces her to stumble through Manhattan until she winds up in a car with her dreaded dad poking holes in her very flimsy story. The big reveal, of course, is Sally finding out Don's dark secret about how he's not actually working in his office anymore. You know, since it seems to be Sally's unintended mission in life to find out all of Don's dark, ugly secrets. At first, Sally tries to play along with Don's bullshit rather than calling him out. Why would you just let me lie to you like that? Because it's more embarrassing for me to catch you in a lie than it is for you to be lying. But eventually she gets tired of it and just starts speaking out loud not just the truths about his job, but also about his affair that she witnessed. Prior to that, people who try to tell the truth are cut off or blocked from communicating. Like Shirley, she gets gorgeous flowers and a proposal, but when Peggy claims those flowers as part of her ongoing Ted conspiracy theory, she also cuts Shirley off before Shirley can clarify Peggy's mistake. Dawn gets cut off, too, when she's trying to defend herself in front of Lou and Joan. When she tries to explain her side of the story regarding the perfume and Sally's appearance, Lou cuts her off. He probably knows on some level that she's in the right, and he fears that he'll be embarrassed if the full story comes out. Pete's trying to give the partners what should be good news about Chevy dealerships that he's signed, but the conference system keeps cutting out, exasperating everyone. And later, when he's trying to explain to Roger why this business is actually important to him, Roger responds like this. Let me just go to Detroit. I'm sure... When you try to talk and no one is hearing you, is it any wonder that you start to sour on the idea that talking has any value in the first place? Pete's frustrations get the better of him and he declares that he isn't going to bother communicating with New York or communicating with Ted or communicating, apparently, with anyone. You know what? We're not talking anymore. And you know who else isn't talking to Ted? Peggy. She makes Moira deliver an opaque message about a quote-unquote client. Then, when Teddy tries to call and find out which client, because he's not at all messing with her like she assumes, Peggy orders Shirley to keep him away. Sally, too, seems sour on the entire idea that talking has any use whatsoever. She refuses to speak to Don multiple times, even when he seems to be wanting to open up lines of communication. In case you didn't get the message, she says it bluntly. Please stop. I'm not stop in a car. Stop talking. And hey, Don himself tells her that the reason he lost his job is because he opened his big fat mouth and told the truth. So there's plenty of reason throughout this episode to believe that talking is a bad idea and that the non-talkers may have a point. And yet, when Don and Sally start to talk openly, things begin to look up a little. Part of the reason the past keeps coming back up is because a lot of people aren't truly dealing with it. Peggy's not really acknowledging how tied up in knots she is over Teddy's departure, which is why everything around her seems like it comes back to him. And Don is so steadfastly refusing to deal with what happened at the office that he has his former secretary trying to steal files for him. But as you say, when people confront the truth, especially Don, it helps. Even a small amount of progress can be very powerful. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you. Which leaves the big question. Will Don suck it up and tell Megan the truth about his life and his feelings? 
He's so afraid that people will reject him if they know the truth, like his job rejected him. But will Sally's love convince him to be more open about who he is? Well, the California question is the one Sally asked that he refused to answer. So maybe he doesn't know himself. If you enjoyed The Orange Couch, please tell your friends about us. You can go right to our YouTube channel by visiting theorangecouch.tv. Thanks so much for watching.